tank. Have them pump us up. Oh, Cotton, cotton candy. candy. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> the world's most delightful fraud. There isn't much to it, but it looks so good. Here's one of the adult rides. Great big Ferris wheel. And the adults will be lining up at the ticket hey, office buying big lots of tickets, along with all the younger adults. Ride. There's our Viticon camera actually in the Ferris wheel. Going up, up, up. Still higher. We're at the top now. And for two bits, you have your own moment at the top of the world. You can see the horizon way over there. If you wonder what's over that horizon, I can tell you. Florida. If you look eastward, this is Weeki Wachi, 40 miles outside of Tampa, Florida, a playground of the nation. It's getting ready in the fall now for its winter season. And here at Wikiwachi, it begins today with a special Sunday show. You're about to go down into the world's only underwater theater. The show is on. Now you are underwater with our live television cameras in one of the deepest and clearest springs in the world, looking at a most unusual sight and most unusual stage. The water gushing up out of a cleft in the earth 137 feet below the surface. Let's watch the show a bit. Kind of cute, too. Uh, the fish, I mean. Well, they're all cute. There's a, who's this, an itinerant wanderer, a beachcomber in over his head, I guess. Little hula trio. Now, what have we here? This is guaranteed to be the first time on television you've ever seen a girl eating a banana underwater. Where's that coming, the Navy? Let me take your picture, girls. <laughs> Off for more conquest. Over here. Hi. <laughs> Meanwhile, the girls merrily chew away on their bananas there. This is a ballet. We might name this Under Swan Lake. the full 137 feet down to the mouth of the spring, the pressure increasing every foot of the way. And up from the depths.
from an underwater playground in Florida where all eyes are on the swimmers to Lake Mead where all eyes are on Donald Campbell. Ordinarily, the moment we've been waiting for is now at hand because Donald Campbell is about to get underway for his final trial. From Beacon Rock, where I spoke to him just a few moments ago, four odd miles distant from the measured mile over which he'll run, he has refueled his bluebird, ready to bring us another sound of our times. And after the usual haste of preparations, our Beacon Rock camera shows Campbell calmly getting into the speedboat driver's seat. And there you see the bluebird as it is anchored to the barge at Beacon Rock. Signals being given from those who are on the barge, and Donald Campbell will shortly get underway because in a matter of just seconds, they'll pull the cowling over his head, and then with that, he'll fire up the jet motor to steer for the run for the record. The super sensational run of the racing, roaring, thrusting bluebird, which we had expected against time, but which on account of the ground swell on the surface of the lake, Donald Campbell held down to 150 miles an hour approximately as he ran over the first run. And then in speaking to him privately and quietly, I asked him if he wanted to go on for two more runs, and he said, no, Ted, I don't, for the simple reason that the ground swell will not let down for five hours or so and maintain a certain effect against us in the bluebird. So I will just run down so that you can see this thing in camera, and, uh, of course, we'll all be quite excited. There you see Donald Campbell getting all the signals as he sits under the cowling in the Bluebird. In moments, we'll have him right on the camera, roaring for all he's worth over the ordinarily sleazy surface of this portion of Lake Mead, where in the vastness of nature's creation, he will send that new sound reflecting from the stately hills of Arizona and Nevada. Well... Donald Campbell is checking for a final notation with his chief engineer, Leo Villa, and with Andy Brown. And once he's underway, well, that roaring plant of jet propulsion will crash a vibration against these hills that have stood for time immemorial. And people are down on the shore edge of the lake. They have to stand quite precariously because this is a rock-ribbed coast. And also at the same time, there are here many, many boats in a sort of a maritime display, anxious to be as close to the record run as they possibly can. Well, I had said to myself that no wind, no ground swell, nor even an errant wake from a cruising craft would harass his effort. But that ground swell will, and even though he does run very slowly, maybe 160 to 180 miles an hour, the clock that I showed you quite a while ago will madly take off his run in the measured mile. And then, had he been able to do 14 seconds, as that clock will show you with Mr. Earl Crocker, we would have had a de decent record. So the officials are standing by up on the measured mile course, waiting for the boat to start. It is now being pushed away from the barge, as you see. And there is Donald steering. He's got his helmet on, and he's getting uh, a bit of air through a tube. In a moment, when he fires up full, you will see that jet just roar. And there she is. She's starting just to roar up. There'll be a terrific wake, and away she'll go. Now, as we follow him with our 60-inch KING DV camera eye, he seems to get into action better. And there he comes, and here is our 60-inch camera lens, definitely taking a good view of Donald Campbell. Now. I must, because it is necessary for me, describe exactly what is occurring on the lake so that you can keep pace by voice. And then, when the bluebird roars into high, I, because I get thrilled and will lose my voice in the tension of excitement, I won't be able to control my emotions, nor will anybody here. We'll keep quiet as you watch.